know sorry, what? Battery. In every character, everything that we do, sorry. I think as actors, us good ones anyways, <laughs> uh, <laughs> find a little, a little bit of ourselves for a certain honesty for people to, to attach themselves to. So there is a fair amount of, of, of me that's in Dan, like how handsome he is. <laughs> it's a lot like me. Um, and I try to think that's almost everything I do. It's a great question. Hello. So I asked Stevie yesterday um, what his favorite chemistry was on set, and he said that I should tell you that he says you're a dick. <laughs> I've heard that a lot today. And you know what? I, I put DB on the spot. <laughs> I had a little hangout with some of my closest friends today, and they all, thank you, you know who you are, uh, and they told me the same message. And I, and I, and I FaceTime that asshole. No way. And you know what he did? He I'll said, yo, you're a dick. And then hung up. So I guess I am. My question to you is basically the same thing. What chemistry is your favorite to have on set? Well, not DB. <laughs> That's fun. No, you know what? I, I'm lucky, because I get to work with everybody, right? Um, and they're all so damn cool. Um, I, I really like what Tom and I have going on, though. We have this sort of, sort of strange, competitive brotherhood um, that I think is really necessary, you know? But then I, I, I love how honest Dan and Chloe are together. I just love. I'm a lover. I'm a lover. I have good chemistry with everybody because I'm great. Next question. So humble. Yeah. Oh. So I was just wondering what it was like to work with Scarlett, aka Trixie, and also whose idea was it to name your character Detective Douche? <laughs> Who do you think? It's Tom's idea. No, honestly, I think they wrote that in already. It was already there. But the moment that I heard Tom say it, I was like, fuck. <laughs> Everyone's gonna call me Detective Douche. <laughs> you do. Detective Douche, all the time. <laughs> so you have the writers to think of that. What was the other question you had? Um, what was it like to work with Scarlett? Oh man, she's so great. Has anybody met her in real life? No. She's the kindest, right, coolest little girl. Like, she's not even a little, she's just a little person, but she's not a little girl. She's like, she's got a soul in her that she's surrounded by so many adults, you know, um, all the time. And she, ha she, she handles herself. Very elegantly, she's a true professional, but she still allows herself to ride her bike, you know, and, 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 and love life. So if anybody ever gets the chance to go meet her in person, I highly recommend you do, because you won't be disappointed. She's a great person. Thanks so much. Love you. Love you. Thank you. Hi. So oh. my question would be like, if there were to be a body swap episode, who would you like to body slap with? Um, Wait, did you say body slap? <laughs> body slap. Oh, so. oh, that's different. <laughs> well, I body slap with. Uh... <laughs> Who am I? Jeez. <laughs> you know what? I'd like to take the reins a little bit. I'd probably body swap with Tom Ellis. <laughs> I mean, you've seen his body. <laughs> I mean. Did I answer it correctly? What do I win? What do I win? Cool question. Hello, fellow San Antonian. How are you? Awesome. You're San Antonian. Yes. I was just there. Nice. Me too. Um, <laughs> Is, is what is your end all be all director gig that you could get? All of it. Oh. One at all. There's nobody that you would love to work with. Yeah, absolutely. Project. Absolutely. You know what? Honestly, my end all be all is just to is I want to create an environment where I'm doing projects and telling stories 
with people that I love to tell them with. And what's made me come to that conclusion is working on this show. Because we found something that's not very common, which is a true sort of respect for each other and love. And it's going to be very sad to go back this year and know that it's going to be the end. You know, we're going to be very emotional. We love each other. But it's because of this experience that makes me only want to do that ever again. So that's, that's my end all be all, is to continue to tell stories with wonderful people. I would love to see more from you. And you will. We'll save that for the last season. Hi. Um, I just wanted to say I've loved you since Ugly Betty and then your transition into shows like Arrow and then now Lucifer. And so I was just kind of curious out of either those three characters or any character you played, where you either felt it was the most difficult to kind of take on or the easiest one for you to kind of embrace. That's, that's, a, that's a good question. Um, mm, they're all kind of difficult, right? Because um, as an actor, you're, you're pretty vulnerable. It's just you. It's just you creating this person. Like a lot of us, it's just you who has to deal with you, really. It's just you creating who you are in life. So it's the same thing with creating characters. So they're all a challenge. They're all scary. Um, but that's, I think that's kind of why we love it. That why I love it anyway is that fear of, of, of creating and living in somebody else's shoes and, and hopefully making them live in a realistic way. Um, but I think the most the most challenging the most challenging kind of thing is to be funny when you go into a character. Like the, the characters that, that need to be funny, it's hard. Even though I'm naturally funny, it's <laughs> it's really hard to be this awesome. Good question. I'm so stupid. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm like a kid. I'm like 12. And you're so humble. I'm so humble. Humbly hot. Well, there's no one else hot. Sweating. <laughs> wondering if your character were to see both Lucifer and Maze in their true forms, how do you think he would react in respect to each of them? Especially with Trixie. Freak the fuck out. <laughs> Season I five? So. I think so. I hope so. I, 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 think, I think that's what it is. I think I've said it a couple to a couple of different people that I think that's what it'll take to realize that there's a reality beyond, a, beyond this life will mess him up. Uh, and hopefully he gets the opportunity to do that. You know? Did I answer the question? Yeah. What was your question? Hi. Uh, in the episode that you directed, what was the hardest scene to direct and how did you approach getting that from the words on the page to an action on the screen? <laughs> you know the hardest, uh, uh, um, the hardest scene in the episode I directed was the racetrack scene. Um, we're on a real racetrack, and there was so much that has to happen well, that involved green screen. And I never, I mean, you guys have seen the little short films I've done that for like twelve dollars. <laughs> you know? Now I'm working with whatever budget they give us for Lucifer, and you got to use a green screen. I'm like, you can't just edit it in nine movies? For <laughs> real, dude? Spoiled. Hashtag rat. Uh, no, that was, that was a real challenge for me. I got, I got really nervous about it because I had never done it um, before. But it, I learned a great deal. You know, I learned that I didn't have to know that, that I was surrounded by a bunch of professionals that did know how to do it. And all I had to do was rely on their talent. Um, but that was by far the most intimidating part. And in fact, I called another director, uh, one of our season directors, um, Louis Melito, uh, in to help me figure out how to, how to do that, because I was shit my pants. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, detective, do I mean Dan. <laughs> no, you can say it, say it, go. Do it. Uh, Oh, it hurts every time. But I like it. So, okay. So my question is, 
what's your most favorite pudding flavor, and have you ever stolen pudding from someone else's fridge? My favorite is chocolate, mixed with vanilla, in a swirl, and I steal my kids' pudding all the fucking time. Ask your mom to buy you some more. <laughs> oh uh, I was just wondering uh, what it's like to work with your family because you've done like a few projects with Caden now and with obviously with Leslie. Um, like at least because of, like your family, you're doing more projects with them as well. So I was just wondering if it's different to work with like strangers. It is different to work with strangers because of that whole getting to know each other. When you're working with a, a family. You already know, you know, you know each other's quirks, you know how to respect each other, you know what's gonna, you know how to talk to each other already. Um, at least I hope you do. And, you know, uh, but with us in particular, yeah, you know, we know how to ask the questions and how to get, get a response, you know, no matter how difficult the question would be. Uh, that's what makes our show great, is that we know each other and it's very easy for Tom to say, Kevin, you suck. <laughs> and me not to get offended. No, I get offended. Uh, <laughs> no, no, it's just that. It's communication. It's a different kind of communication. And, you know, when you work with somebody new, everyone knows this. You start your job, you want to put on your best, you know, your best, your, your nice pair of shoes, your, your best personality forward, you know, and, and, and shove everything aside until you are comfortable enough to express a certain part of yourself. Um, but working with a family, you, all the cards are on the table, you know? And, and I like that more. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, Detective Douche. Sorry, I had to say it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks. My question is, um, do you think um, Lucifer and Dan will make up at all? Like, because I know, like last season, Dan was really mad at Lucifer misplacing his anger towards him. Do you think they'll make up? I think it could be boring. <laughs> no, no, no. You know what? I, I don't know necessarily that they will make up or necessarily even become friends. But I think there's... I think there could be a possibility that they can learn to at least respect each other. And I think that's kind of what we all want. You know, you may not, you may not like the person you work with, but if they're good at what they do, then you have to have, you have respect for that, right? And I think, I think the two characters would be more appealing, I think, and more realistic if, if you can find a certain common respect for each other. And, um, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> this is a terrible answer, I'm sorry. I tried, guys. I had to be smart. <laughs> Next question. No, I really am, though. Good. First, I also want to congratulate you and your wife on the award you got at the San Antonio Film Festival. Thank you for stopping me. Thank you so much. And I was wondering if you could give us any hints or spoilers to any of your future products that, projects that you'll be doing. Uh, yeah. First of all, really honestly, thank you for that. It was really cool. It's called the Maverick Award, which is based on uh, a family a very influential uh, family in San Antonio in particular, but that's where the word Maverick came from, inspired by that, by that family. And so it was the inaugural um, sort of uh, giving of this, of this award and it's for a filmmaker who is from San Antonio and sort of thinks outside the box and presses forward to try to tell their own creative stories. And, and uh, I was very honored to receive that. Woo! <coughs> <Thank> <laughs> I wanted to know if you could give us any hints or spoilers about your future projects. Yes, absolutely. Um, so Alejandro Films uh, started off as a YouTube channel to challenge myself to learn how to be a filmmaker and learn all these little aspects. Uh, by little, I mean giant aspects of what it takes to actually create and tell the story. Um, but now it's evolving into something bigger, I hope. Um, so. My wife and my sister-in-law and myself uh, together are going to create Alejandro films on a, on a higher level. So we're pleasantly looking for um, 
uh, material that think outside the box, that tell stories in an entertaining way, but still challenge us to think about what's going on in today's world and within ourselves. Um, and that's, there's some stuff coming up soon about that. But I did, the most recent thing you will see is a, is a short film that I, uh, um, I star in with Leslie Ann Brandt. <laughs> called Adult Night. It's exactly what you think it is. Uh -huh. um, she also produces it, so you know, together we're, you know, that's part of the family. Like, we're, we're keeping the family going, right? Um, and, um, you get to see me oiled up. <laughs> in latex. <laughs> so that's, yeah, exactly. Uh, that's, that's what I thought when I read it. So, eh. <laughs> And that's going to be a really fun sort of festival piece that we got going on. But be on the lookout because we're just going to kind of try to create that family of filmmakers and tell cool stories. Thank you. Hi, I'm not going to address you, but technically you should have none of it as it is. So, so um, it's nice to see you again. I met you two years ago at WonderCon 2017. Okay. I don't know if you remember my face. It's in two years, but any, anyway. Let me see your face. <laughs> Come here. Really? Let me see your face. Faster. <laughs> it's okay, she's not gonna attack me. Let me see. What was your question? Oh uh, yeah, uh, so my, uh, Wait, did you have a question? <laughs> my question was, um, so I know like after season five, you're probably gonna move on to different projects, and I was wondering, have you ever thought of doing a buddy cop movie with Tom Ellis? Because honestly, you two can rock it. Yes, I have. <laughs> yes, I have. Um, I would love, to, like, I would love to work with that dude forever. You know, he's one of the main reasons um, when Lucifer first came my way. Uh, uh, the first thing they, they, they did was call and say, hey, there's uh, this new show called Lucifer. It's been picked up. There's a character that we're trying to reshape uh, and want to know if you'd be interested in, 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 in joining the team. <clears throat> and the first question I always ask is, who's involved? Who's in it? You know, because I want to work with cool people. And, 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 I yeah. do. <laughs> Don't you? and yet you're still on Lucifer. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I had known Tom, I had known of Tom uh, because of Rush. Yeah. yeah. Because he beat me for it. <laughs> and so I had to see who beat me, and deservedly, it was him. Um, and when they said his name, I was like, yep, yeah, I'm in. <laughs> I think he's so cool, I think he's great. And so, yeah, any opportunity I get to work with that dude, I will jump, jump at it. Yeah, he's a good one. He's a good one. He's a keeper. Yeah, thank you again. Thank you. Hi. Um, so I know you co-direct with your wife sometimes, and you're in love with each other's like goals. Um, and she's an amazing photographer. But my question to you is, um, what is your favorite part about co-directing with her, or being directed by her? That's good. <laughs> uh, I think, just to piggyback up what I said earlier, is that we just know how to talk to each other. You know, we've been together for 17 years plus. Exactly. Exactly. I proposed, I proposed to her one month after I met her. I did. And then we got married a year later. Uh, <laughs> we did, and now, now we have a kid. So, all of that... That got you. Um, all of that just is an expression of our, of our communication. And so my favorite thing about working with her is that she, we know how to communicate with each other. Um, and she doesn't hurt my feelings too much. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Kevin. Hello. Um, what's your favorite scene that you shot with Tom? With Tom? Yeah. Um, you know what, Tom and I shared a, um, a really honest moment. Um, and I want to say, 
I want to say it was the Duchifer ex uh, episode. I think it was that one. But we shared a moment, and it was on the front of the, of the steps. And um, uh, it was the episode where I made fun of him, where I was on stage. Hey, my name's Lucifer. <laughs> I like your lady. Like that. Whatever it was. Whatever it was. It was that. It was that. We had, and I think it was the first moment that we, as characters, got to share, and as actors. Um, a moment of like genuine honesty, and it just and we just did it, and that was probably one of my favorite. That one, and um, the the because of the circumstances, uh, the energy was so beautiful. Was the night that um, uh, Trisha was 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 shot? Oh. You know, like the air was the evening. It was it was, it was a beautiful evening overlooking L.A. on the, on the side of this kind of windy road that over, you know, over a cliff, and it was a sad moment, but we all, like, share genuine love for each other, so those are my two favorite moments, I think, is sharing that with her and then sharing that with Tom. Okay, thank you. Hello. Hello. So, in shows like Gold Boy and in Lucifer, one of the things I noticed in common is a very confident chip on your shoulder uh, kind of detective who needs to prove himself but has a lot of flaws. What do you enjoy about playing a character like that? And what's the biggest challenge of playing a character like that? Because you do it really well. It's because I have a giant chip on my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I do. <laughs> no, you know what? Every character is flawed. Every human is flawed. Um, yeah. And that's what I love about what I do, is that I get to find uh, an honesty, of a truth uh, behind every flaw. It's my responsibility to do it and not make anyone a villain or, or, or a bad person, um, because none of us are. We, we, we may do bad things, but there's, there's a deeper root behind that. It's my responsibility that I, that I enjoy uh, uh, digging around to find what it is that made that person who they are. That's, that's what I love about doing that. There was another part of that question, what was that? Uh, enjoyable part of it? All of it. <laughs> I'm here all night. Hi, Kevin. Hello. Uh, so I used to love you in True Blood. Used to? I still do. Uh, if True Blood and Lucifer ever like crossed over in some crazy universe, what character would you want to play? Lafayette. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I say that because he's the showiest, and I'm a fucking clown. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, no, Nelson Ellis was one of my great friends and one of the best actors I've known ever. Um, and he did such a justice to that and I could never do it even close to that. But I saw how much fun he had creating that soul and uh, I think I would have fun too. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so my question for you is, because I loved you in True Blood as well, um, between your character in True Blood and Lucifer, which one did you think that you felt more like? Mm. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. It's a good one. Um, there's me in, in both of them, right? <laughs> and in order for me to believe that person, there has to be enough of me in there. And I think, I think there was more of me, Kevin, Alejandro. <laughs> You're in timeout. In Jesus. In True Blood. Um, he, I think, I think he wore his his emotions on his sleeve a little bit more, like I do. Um, and he was all about love. And it was all about finding uh, finding who you are through love and. I think I think more of you was in him. Yeah. Thank you.
Hello. Hello. I was wondering who some of your biggest inspirations would be when it comes to both playing the character of Dan and when it comes to directing. Well, um, I'm going to change your question with a different an with, a, with, with with my answer. Um, my inspiration for what I do, actually, um, my biggest inspiration was my high school drama teacher, who who, who showed me that uh, college was a realistic thing for me. Um, and prior to knowing, like, I didn't know that, that I could, uh, um, it wasn't in my, it wasn't in my cards, you know, um, for a bunch of different reasons. Um, but he showed me that, uh, I was okay at it, and that if I worked hard I would get better, and that people would appreciate what I had to offer to this craft. So that's my biggest inspiration on every character and every job that I take, because he told me, yes, you can. Oh. And, I, and I can, because of that. Thank you. But hold on, there was, there was another part of your question, though. Wasn't there? No? You want me to stop talking? <laughs> Hi, um, I loved you in Charmed. Charmed? <laughs> and I wanted to know, what was it like going from the being a demon in Charm to Detective Douche? Nothing. <laughs> We're both demons. Um, <laughs> wow, that was, that's a real blast in the past. Um, they're just so different, man. That was, uh, even though they're both fantastical sort of um, uh, worlds, I wore a dress in that one, <laughs> and not as Detective Douche, <laughs> for people to see. <laughs> you got it! You got it! Yeah. <laughs> yep, that's my answer. <laughs> nice. Hi. Hello. Hi. Uh, question, when you filmed the Six Flags episode, um, I was actually working there at the time. Were you working there? I was. I was in the parking lot while you were running with did, the bump. Did you hear me scream? Yes. That was real. Um, honestly, at the, time, at the time, I didn't know uh, the show at the time, so I didn't know who the heck you were. <laughs> she still doesn't. She still doesn't. Yeah, like, Who's that Tom guy? Yeah, uh, no. I not that Tom guy. No, I didn't know him either. Where's that lesson? Sorry. You're here for Trisha. I get it. Yeah. You, you caught me. You caught me. Um, no, I was uh, standing in the parking lot while people got mad at me while they were trying to shoot your scene. But anyway, did you enjoy uh, shooting at Six Flags, and were you scared of Viper? No, I was not scared okay. of Viper. Good, that's not a good one. Uh, no, of course, man. We got to, to write it like a hundred times. Oh, nice. Um, and I, I, I actually love, love, love roller coasters. Uh, <laughs> I'm just like, shake it now. <laughs> Give me more. I got this. <laughs> yeah, I get to be a kid. You know? Um, yeah. Thank you. You guys are starting to see how my brain works, right? <laughs> I was like, okay. Where were we? <laughs> Nice. Um, I just wanted to say first, I think you're my husband's favorite character because he's cosplaying as you today. Uh, as Dan. Where's he at? Let me see you, Holmes. Yo, homie, let me see you. What up? What up? I say. Alright, he's scared. That's alright. Oh, you're not scared. I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> Bravo. Well done. I want to if at any point you felt like you might, your character might have been meeting at the end or been killed off at any point, um, I was a little bit worried about that, at least in season one. <laughs> Specifically in season one, I was like, I just fucked job. I killed off everything. Please give me another to be this one. Yeah, all the time, man. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, so, uh, there's something cool about what I get to do. Um, I do get killed off a lot. Um, but luckily, <laughs> luckily it's memorable. So people love to kill me. But that wasn't fair. I was like, you know, I'm, I really dig this show, guys. And I'd like to stay for as long as you let me stay. But even to this day, I still fear getting killed off. <laughs> Nah. For real, me too. Here's a kid in the show, he won't be killed up. <laughs> Hi. Hello? By the way, you're yeah. hot. <laughs> <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, One more time. <laughs> Hold on, let me play this. What does it say and what does it mean? Oh, yes. Uh, this one? Yeah. It says, be the change you wish to see in the world. Oh. And I, and, I, and I try my damnedest to live that way. I've been stopped, yeah. pausing and trying to read it, and it was just... <laughs> <laughs> You're still hot. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Um, what's the worst prank somebody's ever played on you? In my life? <laughs> sure. No, on set. Lauren German, you've all heard this story. She stole my fucking bike. <laughs> but it wasn't my bike. I haven't. We haven't heard this. We were, we, were, we were shooting the show in Vancouver, and then we had to do some shots out in LA. Had us at a, at a hotel over by the pier. And so I'm like, hey, I'm back in California. What do I do? I like to ride bikes. The hotel provides bikes. I'm like, great. Can I, can I borrow a bike so that I can go to set at the pier? Absolutely. Just lock it up. I lock it up. I go to set. Lauren has called the hotel saying, hi, yeah, I'm staying at the hotel. I forgot my, my bike combination. Uh, can, can you tell me what it is? And they fucking told her. <laughs> and she stole my bike and stuck it in a trailer. Prior to that, like three weeks before that, I had my own personal bike that I rode to, to set in Vancouver on the first day got stolen. And so she knows how freaked out I am about it already. And I'm like, I get it, I'm like, where's my bike? Who's that? It's not my bike! She's in the trailer, like, with a phone, watching me like crazy. <laughs> but doesn't have the balls to come out and tell me herself. She sends our AD, our, 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 our PA, to come out. Lauren stole the bike. It's in the trailer. <laughs> I'm so pissed, but it was a good one. <laughs> she had two shit. And also, have you ever been to Knoxbury Farm? And if so, what's your favorite ride? It's been a long time. Um, so I don't remember what the rides are. <laughs> Your mom. That's, that's, that's truth. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> I think they're texting each other. Are you worried about that? You had to get it approved? Yes. <laughs> This is a what-if scenario for you. If Chloe ended up marrying Lucifer and went to hell to rule as his queen and wanted to take Trixie along, how do you think Dan would react to that? I think she would say the words, I'm moving to hell and taking Trixie with Lucifer, and then I think Dan's head would just pop. And it'd be over. Just this bottom part of my body going like that. No head. Pop. For real. That's the way I'd write it. So your WikiLeaks already spilled that you guys are going to have a musical episode. Did you mm -hmm. guys practice or have you already done like musical numbers in any of your other shows? Yes. There was a slight musical number in um, uh, last season. Yeah. I think there was a dirty dancing moment. 
And, uh, <laughs> I heard the same rumor. And I'm not happy about it one bit. <laughs> but this motherfucker's got some moves. So hopefully they utilize that. Okay, we have one more question. Uh-oh. Yes, I have a question. Uh, Kevin. <laughs> I recognize that voice. Why, why, can't put why oh, why, oh, why are you such a douche? <laughs> yes. Because of you. <laughs> you know, they make me do it. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you they make me do it. Come on, that was not a dick move. Good thing I like dick. No I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. What was that? I just like just talking about the good old times, the good old days on set. Oh, there's trainers. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Sorry to crash the party. Oh, thank God, I was like, I was dying up here. I so needed you. I felt, I felt that, yeah. I felt that. Also, you um, like... Tom Ellis, guys! This is why we do our show. Do you want to stand for it? What's happening? Have you got to go and do stuff now? Oh, are you guys getting me off the stage? I just fucking got here! I just got started. No, you're good. You got a few complaints, Kevin. Uh, <laughs> too much? Not too much? No. You're perfect. Wait, do you want us to put the questions together while we're here? Yeah. Oh. Wait, what in Rome? Yes. Wait, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're a uh, oh. five minutes. No, no, Kevin, no, you've got plenty of time. So, I can't see it. Oh, now, 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 now everyone's stage fright. <laughs> Oh, I, don't, I don't know what to ask. Oh. Hi, oh, hi Tom. Um, hi Kevin. Oh, so. Hi. <laughs> Satan has been humanized. How does this cause you to like change change your view on the world? Like looking on looking on both sides of the story. Liz is on it. <laughs> or looking on both sides of the story to kind of like figure out or, or to kind of like judge what's going on that front. And are we scared? Judge. <laughs> Uh, the first thing I want to point out is how Tom walks with his chair. He really does. Is your back okay? I can't move because I'm wearing 20 million t-shirts. <laughs> I, I thought he was yoked. I was like, damn, I gotta get back in the gym. I hope you can get on stage with Kevin, alright. <laughs> What was your question? <laughs> Sorry, what was your question? Uh, so playing like a more like humanized version of um, Satan that's usually not seen in media, like uh, cause you to like change how you think about the world and how like you like um, judge certain situations. Has it changed the way that I think about it? Yeah. Um, I think what it's done is it's it's brought a bit of clarity. Uh, in my life about the, like, the sort of underlying message of what the show is. And I've never really thought about it before. But the fact that everyone sort of wants to blame someone else for things going wrong, when it's much more important just to look in the mirror and take a bit of responsibility for what you put out there. And I think that that's kind of... It, it was nothing I really thought... I didn't think these big, huge things about the show before it happened, but I kind of feel that that's a really important thing that's come out of it is that, you know, everyone's so worried about, like, shifting blame or why people do bad things and stuff. People do bad things because They're they decide to. Yeah. And yeah. it's not anyone else making them do it. They just, and, you know, we've all done bad things. and No one here is, like, without blame of things that they've done wrong in their life. But I think <laughs> just having a bit of, you know, a bit of self-reflection and um, taking responsibility and then just deciding what you want to put out into the world. And if you put good things out in them, that's a much better thing. 
Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Um, for Tom, in regards to what you said earlier... <laughs> about missing British banter. Were you ever inspired by some of the Monty Python's work or Faulty Towers style shows? And are you planning on doing any British comedy style shows in the future? Miranda? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh yes, uh, heavily, heavily, heavily influenced by uh, things like Monty Python and you know, old school like British sitcoms. There was one called Dad's Army. Hey. There was one called, this is, this is the one that my, my American friends don't believe me. There was a show called A Low Alone. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that, yeah. It was a show based in Nazi occupied Paris, and it was a comedy. <laughs> <laughs> and it was brilliant. And me and my granddad used to watch that together all the time. And I, I, that kind of old school, you know, uh, in front of a live studio audience, the, 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 all that sort of stuff I love, but it was a huge part of my growing up. Um, and then I did a show called Miranda. <laughs> that was watching that vein, uh, and I had so much fun doing that. I, I would always love to go back and do something like that, for sure. Or do a movie that's like a proper spoof movie, like Airplane. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. Call it Lucifer. <laughs> Don't call me Shirley. <laughs> <really. laughs> Next question. And Kevin. <laughs> What's up? How are you? I'm good. Uh, yeah. Okay. So it's about Decker Star because we all been wondering. Um, will uh, Will Lucifer and Chloe do the Devil's Tango? <laughs> What does that mean? Um, it's a family show. I need some kind of demonstration or are you good? Uh, are you, is he rude? Sex. Oh. Um, in the words of Lauren German, are they going to take a trip to Bone Town? <laughs> right? Will they? Will they? I mean, now we're going to Netflix, who knows? <laughs> Um, I don't know. I mean, would you like to see that? Yeah. Yeah. Filthy, filthy, filthy. You were saying that yourself, um, that's what you want to see. Yes! <laughs> we may allude to it. Oh. Oh, <laughs> that you get ready for the devilish and I'm curious what songs are on there because I've, I've tried to look it up in different like YouTube videos but I never see any of like what, what songs you actually have on that playlist oh my gosh well there's about 230 on there now since ah. we started uh, so the, the first very first song that went on the playlist was Sympathy for the Devil okay. uh, that was the first song I put on there because it was the first so I always start the playlist with any songs that were already name checked in the script so the first scene of the pilot where Lucifer's driving through LA, that was originally set to Sympathy for the Devil. Um, the the and then when they realised they couldn't afford it, um, <laughs> they changed it. Um, they changed it. But, um, God, there's, there's loads and loads and loads and loads of songs on there. From, you know, there's hip-hop through to classical. And these are all songs that you, that you listen to personally yeah. to, like, 
Just get me in the mood. Yeah, uh, that's all I have playing in my car when we're shooting. Yeah. It's just that on a loop. But you have a pretty big influence on it, right? Like on what, what music or what certain songs that get accepted? I, into I've, the... I've always got opinions about it. <laughs> that's what I mean. You have a lot of fucking opinions. <laughs> <don't you? laughs> yeah. I think, because I, I, I love music, but I also felt that music in this particular show was really important because it was important to Lucifer as well. So I, there was stuff that we set up in the pilot that, and this is what happens in TV, you make a pilot episode and then more often than not loads of people that were nothing to do with the pilot continue to make the show afterwards. So I just wanted to make sure that we kept it true or relatively you know, true to what we'd set up in the first instance musically. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of oldies and there's a lot of newies in there. Um, and basically, what you know, it's, it always feels like a sense of achievement where you feel like, oh, this song would be great with that, and, and they do it. But it doesn't always work out like that because it's normally down to money. <laughs> Thank you, and I hope you get to sing for us today. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, pretty please, pretty <laughs> please. Oh, it's all today. Jason and Rob. <laughs> I mean, okay, next. <laughs> 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 okay. Spin the wheel. Hey, Paul. Hey, He's sweating heavily. Can we start taking t shirts off? Yes. yes. <laughs> hey, Tom. Hello. Ben. Greetings from the Philippines. Um, Hello. Hi. Um, so, my question is what's your most favorite story, like episode arc with Kevin arc, throughout the whole series so far? Is that a question for him? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, for both, yeah. Kevin and I absolutely love working together, um, and so the first opportunity we really got to do that, I think, was the opportunity. Is the moment I'll always remember was in season one where I got to the douche for episode, basically, where I wanted to learn how to douche. <laughs> That was, that was the way through, <laughs> and um, we both, you know, we had, a, we had a lot of fun doing that because both of us like to have fun in the moment. So we don't always like pre-plan what we're going to do. We're kind of riffy, mm -hmm. and um, that's, you know, that was the first opportunity we got to really do that. Uh, but so because of that, I think it inspired uh, the writers to, to to create more of those moments for yeah. us. Because they realize how great we are. Yeah. 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 They try to keep us apart. Yeah. Yeah. How about in Kevin's point of view? What's his favorite way to do? Oh, that doesn't matter. <laughs> I don't recall ever doing a scene with Tom. To be honest. Oh my God! Can I tell them about? Can I tell them about that? So we you know we did the opening. Oh, shit. <laughs> we did the opening of the finale with the big dance number, and we had the dirty dancing move, right? <laughs> So what, what didn't make it in the episode, which was my favourite end to an episode scene ever, was so we did the whole dance number, I threw Kevin out of the frame and then, then you don't see him again after that. <laughs> and then there's a whole scene with Lauren and then Lucifer walks out at the end of the, the thing. So we did the, the thing, did the whole scene with Lauren and then I walked out and then we did a take where from nowhere Kevin just dropped out. <laughs> I just dropped out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I really hope they want to keep it, but it was just a bit much, apparently. <laughs> um, anyway, maybe that's enough. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Hello, gents. This question could be for both of you. So, um, if you were able to expand on the mythology of Lucifer, hashtag season six, <laughs> uh, what other what other cultures mythologies would you like to see you know you know Lucifer interact with you know different you know characters and celestial beings and once Dan understands that there's this whole other reality uh, would you like to see Dan interact with some of these other you know characters as well? <laughs> well, I think it's, it's going to be at some point if it happens, it's going to be quite fun to see Dan try and get his head around all of it. Um, I don't know that he can. I don't, I don't know that he can handle it. Well, he's a very intelligent man. He is, but because of that, <laughs> Tom, because of how intelligent he is, he's gonna blow his mind. Yeah. It'll break him. It's gonna break down. It will break him. Uh, a lot of people have asked about, you know, it'd be interesting to see some more siblings, or maybe even see Dad one day. This could be quite, could be quite a fun Wasn't character to introduce. Yeah. Um, but. 
you know, as I don't know anything about the next season, I can't tell you. Life. It was a wishless question. <laughs> a wishless question. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. It is wishless. <laughs> I, I hope we can tick as many of your boxes as we can in the next season. Kinky. Yeah. I'm sure as hell going to try. That was not sexual. <laughs> yeah, it was. Sure. Oh, sure. Sure. I hear a box of it as I <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you for that. <laughs> this is what it's like to make our show. Welcome to... A few minutes of shooting a scene. Exactly. Hashtag pervy. That's Lauren right here. You yeah. get fucked. Yes, please. Yes. We have no idea. Hi, oh. Paul. Hi, Kevin. Uh, it's nice to uh, agree to Indonesia. It's nice to meet you again, Paul, after running into you in Santa Monica. Oh. And I. <laughs> Which one of us did you run? Because I can't see you. Which one of us did you run into? <laughs> Uh, Come up here, let me see your face. No way! No way! No way! That's not me! No way! This is not planned, I promise. Yeah. It was not planned. I took a, I asked him if I could take a picture of you inside a small white van. The, tra the traffic light just turned green. Green! And I was panicking. I you thought you were a private but you look, no. you look familiar to me. I just can't put my finger on it. Bane of my existence. No, I'm just kidding. But I want to get everyone that in my family, even my cousin, to watch it because I couldn't shut up about you and Kevin and the whole show. Oh. And all my parents know. Okay. And they're okay with me coming here. Oh. <laughs> Did you kind of busted right now? <laughs> what was the question? Uh, the question is, Paul, can you see yourself in like a, a Super Morning Star in DC animated movie? Yeah. And Ooh. if you are willing to do action movies. Am I willing to do action movies? In the future. Hell have, you, have you seen his biceps? <laughs> I mean, come on. Not been working Are action way. movies ready for him? That's <laughs> <laughs> the real question. So true. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm so sorry. What are you sorry about? That was a great question. I'd love to be an action movie star. <laughs> The traffic light was green anyway, and the traffic warden was staring down at me, and I was really scared. Okay. I was a bit scared as well, but that's because I thought you were a private investigator. <laughs> and I was busted. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> the tax man's caught up with me. Okay. She has something going on, like... She's just... She's a stage whore. She's, like, sneaking up on stage, making us call her up. I'm getting looked at. I'm feeling the heat right now. This shit is not happening. This is my, this is my bodyguard, Lance. <laughs> We're calling Lance Strongarm instead of Lance Armstrong. I'm Mr. Strongarm. You're on timeout. I think you've uh, been asked to leave the princess. Is it really time? Clearly, it's Jordan. Oh, dear. Can I have a piggyback ride? In and out!
Good luck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's like four people back there, so. Oh, okay. This is like almost as bad as Sebastian. <laughs> Some people got some t-shirts. And uh, let's take some more. It's very bright in here now. Oh, there we go. Ooh. Um, right, who's next on the uh, on the microphone? Of truth? Hello. Hello. I have a music question for you. Um, the possibility of you working with Jason Mans and making an album. Woo! What? What kind of song would you like to put on the album, and would you have anyone you'd like to guest on the album? Reef. Reef. So, I've never really thought about doing an album before, and then there's lots of songs on the show, and so my one thought about doing, if I was going to do something, would be I'd love to do the songs that we've done on the show. Because uh, I feel like there's a purpose behind that, like it's something that people have heard and they want to listen to. So, that's. Jason and I had a conversation about that a couple of months ago. Since that conversation, um, a few things have happened, and um, it's not out of the question, uh, but there's a few sort of, um, uh, how do I phrase this? Legalities that we need to sort of discuss. Um, but the main thing is that the reason why we might hold it back a bit further is because there may be quite likely to be some more material to put on there after this season. <laughs> So it, and it wouldn't just it wouldn't just be songs that Lucifer has sung because we may have some other characters singing. Um, so that's that's where we're at with it at the moment. But I uh, I would love to make some music and put it on an album and get it out. So we'll see what happens. Uh, but yes, Jason and I are, are good friends and we have talked about this. It's just there's a few more boxes that we have to tick. On that one. Oh yeah. <laughs> A few things we have to check. But anyway, does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Hello, Tom. Hello. <laughs> so, my question is, what's your favorite improv scene that you've done? Are you hot right now? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, a, I'm a little bit toasty, okay? yes. Yeah, I'm good. It's all right, carry on. It's just a thing I do. <laughs> I'm actually tweaking my third nipple. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your favorite improv scene that you've done? In Lucifer? Yes. Ooh. I mean, like more often than not when Lucifer has to do stuff in front of a group of people uh, and uh, do his thing, that's when I'm given a bit of license. So, I, you know, things like the church scene in the pilot uh, and stuff like that. I, I, I love doing stuff that surprises people in the moment, but more often than not, that's our background artists that hold the ramp and do something to. Um, I don't know, I mean, I, we, I, I've, I've been lucky enough to have quite a bit of free reign in certain moments on the show. So, um, one, of the, um, one of the improvised moments that didn't make it on the show, um, because there's a long list of them, and mainly because they're too rude, uh, was um, with Candy Morningstar, and uh, it was the scene where, um, at the end of the scene, I said, yeah, there she is. <laughs> at the end of the scene, uh, I say to Candy, will you marry me? Yes. <laughs> I said, Again, I said to Candy, it was not me. Tom, I said to Candy, will you marry me? And she kind of does a spit take of a, of a drink, and it goes on me. And I went, oh, you're a squirter. Because <laughs> for some reason it didn't make it onto the network TV, I don't know why. <laughs> it's moments like that, you know. And when the little moments get in that have been improvised, uh, and, and they make it onto screen, and that's when I feel a real sense of achievement. So, <laughs> suggesting Donald Trump isn't dead yet, but he'll definitely go to hell. I drew that in thinking, no one's going to like this old fox. Well, now you got Boris you. Johnson. 
Hi. Hello. Um, so they brought up throughout the series Lucifer's Ring a few times. So I was wondering if this season we're finally going to find out what it means or what it is. And if you don't already know, what do you think it signifies? <laughs> I'm not, I, the reason I'm laughing is because the story behind how the ring ended up on Lucifer's finger is this simple. On the first morning of shooting on the pilot, I sort of got dressed into my gear, got my hair done, you know, and everyone's kind of like, is this what Lucifer looks like? I don't know, does it look like this? And I walk up to Len Wiseman, our director, and I say, do you, uh, is this cool? And he was like, yeah, yeah, maybe he has like some jewellery. <laughs> so, so the props guy just comes up and he goes, this is what I've got, and he opens up a box of jewellery. And Len picked out that ring and he went, oh, this looks like it. And he put it on my finger and we went, yeah, that looks good. And we started shooting. <laughs> <laughs> that is the depth of knowledge, the depth of thought <laughs> to the ring. Now, the funny thing is that when you do TV shows and they start off with these small inclinations, you don't know that people are then going to sort of go, well, what's that ring about? What does it mean? There must be something in the ring. Um, and so it gives our, now gives our writers thought of like, oh, maybe we should make something about the ring. But um, yeah, the, the ring was conceived at the very last minute on the very first day of shooting. Okay, thank you. I sometimes think it's Lucifer's third eye. I just, I just do this. <laughs> but, you know, the jury's out. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> This is a logistical question. Um, I was over at the Sunset Tower Hotel earlier this morning looking at it, because that's the basis for Lux. Uh -oh. And, <laughs> oh yes. Um, I'm operating under the fact that Lux, the nightclub, is on the ground floor, or at the basement or something, so it takes up the bottom half. The penthouse is the top half. What's in the middle? Is it a hotel? Is it residential? Does the devil do subleasing? <laughs> like, is there a rental agreement here? What's the qualification of the tenant? That's all it is, it's the world's fattest elevator shaft. That's all it is, it goes club, elevator, penthouse. <laughs> but you know what, I've never, never, ever thought about that. Is that bad? I've never done that. Uh, so, so, thanks, yes. Uh, yes, it's terrible. Um, bad person I, I don't know. I, I like the fact that maybe the devil's a landlord. I like that one. <laughs> Yeah. Any, any and he encourages them to do everything other landlords don't. Yes, yes, you can have indoor fires, you can have all the pets you want in the world. You can smoke. Um, yeah. So he's like the perfect landlord. He's the perfect landlord, exactly. <laughs> you want to have a party? Of course! Alright, thank you. Thank you. Hi. Um, since we've seen hell, I was wondering if we're going to see heaven at all. <laughs> um, uh, I, I posed that same question actually to the writers this year. Um, and they said, uh, "I don't know." Is the honest answer? Would you like to? Yeah. What do you, what do you, what do you think heaven looks like? Lucifer hating beaches because that reminded him of heaven and heaven was like the most beautiful serene beach you could ever be on but who knows that was that was a discussion about three seasons ago so we'll see we'll see what happens thank you thank you
the most rewarding part about playing Lucifer right. is probably moments like this right now, to be honest. <laughs> Will someone take over this home while I get back on stage? <laughs> Please. Are you okay? Okay. I, I, I mean that. Like meeting, meeting the fans, and the fans have become, particularly on this show, such a like... I mean, you guys are like shareholders in our show. That's what it feels like, because, you know, the history of the show and the fact that we're going to get cancelled and all those things, and everyone just came out and said, no, we're not letting this happen because we love it. That was the most overwhelming experience, not just for me, but for all of us. We've never been involved in anything like that before. So to know that what we've been doing has touched people in the way that you just said, that is the most rewarding thing out of all of it. And I honestly, honestly mean that. situation but it doesn't work unless the big boys are there right and at the moment there's a few people in this world ruining it for everybody else ruining it like literally ruining the world and letting that happen and my desire is those people go and some responsible fucking adults take over yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Talking about a deal with the stick up his ass that you can see it beyond. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> oh my god, there's so many. Um, I think, gosh, I don't know. Well, one of the things that really genuinely made me laugh when I first read it was uh, I was in the scene with Linda. Uh, was I in the scene with Linda? It, it, it was basically where Lucifer goes, ah, speak of the me. <laughs> And for some reason, it really tickled me. I, don't know why. I just found it. I found it. But I mean, there are, there are so honestly, there's so many. That my favourite things to do are just to throw British phrases in there <laughs> that Americans don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> so like, there was all these stringent sort of guidelines on Fox about what you could and couldn't say, what you could show and you couldn't show, and stuff. And I'm going, but we can say wanker, and they're like, yeah, that sounds cool. <laughs> Uh, hello, Tom. Uh, hello. Thank you, Grant Martin, Favors. Yeah. I do put on favors. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My question is, what does it mean to you to play the most irredeemable character in history and make him redeemable? What does it mean to me? Yes. Uh, I mean, I, I never really approached this job from a point of going, oh, I'm playing the devil and having all that kind of gravity attached to it. 
because I just went with what was on the page in front of me to start with. Um, <clears throat> and I didn't sort of go out of my way to make him a redeemable character. But one, one of the things that I sort of thought about was if you're going to play, if you're going to play a character who's kind of reprehensible um, and that makes dubious you know, decisions and is uh, a bit kind of um, out there when it comes to ethics and stuff, <laughs> that somehow you've got to like them. You've got to root for them. And uh, I think finding, you know, stripping all the, all the fun and the irreverence out of it, finding those moments that just ground the character in moments of like truth and emotion, that's the things that really help then make it a sort of three-dimensional character rather than just this quippy, you know, whimsical guy. Um, so yeah, does that does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. And okay. my favorite was asking the question. So does that mean I owe you a favor now? <laughs> <laughs> I just suddenly thought that'd be a good porn thing, wouldn't it? <laughs> My name's Grant. Grant Famous. Hi. That's uh, after Lucifer. Anyway. <laughs> so, I just wanted to know if there is a difference between when you kiss other women on the show versus Lauren German. I ask that because when you kiss other women, it looks like a real kiss, but when you kiss Lauren German, it kind of looks like you're kissing your sister. <laughs> That's not true. I don't know if you realize that or not. Well, I can tell you, I've got three sisters and I've never kissed any of them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I actively kind of felt different. Um, gosh, what a strange question. Um, does it feel like I'm kissing my sister because the, what you, the sort of the relationship between the two characters it well, feels wrong? Do you do you realize that there's like a difference between the two? Because no. to the at least to me as a viewer, it, it looks like there's a difference. Well, I just thought they were. Yeah. I thought they were more sensual. <laughs> Tender. I don't know. I think there is, there is a difference between sort of kissing the detective to kissing oh, anyone else. Um, the weirdest one was having to kiss Trisha after we fully established she was my mum. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Hey. Um, my question is. Um, how do you feel about Chloe's actions in season four, trying to send Lucifer to hell? And do you feel like her actions were extreme, or do you feel like you kind of understand her? I think, well, her actions were extreme, but she's just been opened up to a very extreme situation. <laughs> so, I, I mean, as a, as a viewer, no, I don't really blame her for, you know, having that crisis of confidence in the person that she suddenly has found out him, him to be. Um, I mean, it also, you know, it was it was great for our story that she had that extreme reaction because I, you know, if you think about it, the person that you work with and love and you kind of you think that they're kind of mad, but you kind of go with it because there's something there. But whatever the situation, you categorically don't believe that they are the devil because you don't believe in that. So for that to suddenly be opened up as a reality in front of you, I think you know her reaction was quite um, quite warranted. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm glad that they kind of, you know, they kind of got through that <laughs> to the next huge hurdle. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Tom. Hello. Um, first of all, you're right. But the best double I've ever seen played by anybody. Oh, thank very you. talented. Thank you. Uh, out of out of the two, do you prefer singing or acting more? Since you're so talented. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I definitely prefer. Uh, well, I mean. They're very different things. I, I love acting. I, lo I absolutely love it. I love my job. Um, I also love singing for lots of different reasons. But the thing about singing is it makes me feel euphoric. There's a, you know, I feel it's like having a good cry. You feel great afterwards. And that's what singing does for me. Um, but no, I mean, my, the, the thing that I sort of fell in love with was acting. But the fact that the two sort of cross over is just like dream time for me. Throwing a bit of dancing as well, I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's really wonderful. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you.
Hello, you're adorable. Stop it. <laughs> so, twice now, uh, Lucifer has almost uh, seen its end, and th thankfully not. You've traveled the world, and you've got to meet a lot of different fans, and as you're approaching season five, what kind of feelings are you kind of having now? Because I know how it feels as a fan. Oh, my hands on my arm just went up. <laughs> but genuinely, uh, I, to, honestly, I, I haven't quite, I think I'm staving off computing this. Right, I'm just sort of delaying the inevitable because I've had the best time for the last five years doing this show for loads and loads and loads of reasons. But the, sto the journey of this show is quite incredible as a TV show. You know, it's something that, as from, from our point of view, we were making it in Los Angeles and then it got moved to Vancouver and that was a big deal for the people on the show because we were suddenly not doing it from home anymore. So getting it back from Vancouver to Los Angeles, that was a big thing, and then being cancelled, that was a big thing, and then it coming back, it was just like, it was a law to its own, this show. Um, and part, you know, that's part, partly again, because of our fans have just been so vocal and amazing and supportive. Um, and, you know, these days, there's so much TV, there's so much stuff, there's so much content out there. To be in a show that's, that sort of gets noticed, that people know about, that feels like a massive achievement these days. And um, I'm just so proud of everything that we've all put into it to get this far. Because it's been, we've been kind of, you know, you guys don't know about all of this, but we've kind of been up against it quite a lot. You know, we've, 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 we were like the bastard child. <laughs> Really, it's, it felt like that for a long time. It wasn't. Feels until, good to kick ass, doesn't well, it? It feels amazing. But like I've said it before, we wouldn't have known how popular the show was until it got cancelled. Yeah. That was the crazy thing about it. We didn't know that there was all this love out there until the, the potential of it not happening anymore. So it was, you know, it's, it's been it's been a very unique. I, I, I can categorically say there will never be another experience that I have like this on a TV show, I just can't see it happening again because it's so uniquely specific to this show. So it's been an incredible, incredible ride. And when, it, when they call cut on the last day, <laughs> it's going to be a lot to take in. It's going to be a lot to take in. Hey Tom. I can cry as well. <laughs> Who's next? Hi Tom. Hi. Firstly, I'd like to say, and I don't think I'll get the opportunity any any other time soon, is that uh, my parents introduced me to Lucifer to the show, and uh, I was skeptical at first because I was like, when I get an image of someone in my head, it's very very specific. I'm very very picky about it. I'd like to say you are the spinning image of what I saw. <laughs> I think that's good. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. But uh, I was wondering, since Lucifer has so many religious ties, I was wondering uh, if everyone decides to approach it cautiously, and if so, how did they approach it? Well, it was really, it was, a, it was a real kind of sort of interesting experiment, sociological experiment, when we first started the show, because like you, I was a little bit nervous about doing this show, and it wasn't because of religious things. I just I remember reading, I remember reading the script for the first time and looking at the title, going, "Oh, Lucifer! Oh, What's this one going to be about? What's about the devil?" And I, uh, three pages in, I was like, "I love this. I want to do it," <laughs> um, because the character was just so great. It was the way it'd been written and realised on the page was just brilliant. Um, I think you know it was in. I, 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 and the other thing I thought about it was, knowing that we were doing a show called Lucifer, there was inevitably going to be some kind of like backlash. And um, there was quite famously an online petition by a million mums, which is the most ironic name in the world, because I think there's only three of them. Um, but <laughs> they, did, they, did, they did this online petition to get the show banned. I've never even seen it. And to me, that says a lot more about them than it does about the show, yeah. right? Yeah. 
because as people have noticed, this is a show about redemption. It's a show about the most irredeemable character on a path to redemption. And I think that's great. And I, and I, I don't think at any moment we've glamorised anything or made it like, you know, something that, that, um, that people would be offended by, by watching, unless they've already got it in their genes that they're going to be offended because they've decided that's what they're going to be. I haven't got time for people like that. I really haven't. The world's a big place. The world's a big place. And I'll tell you something else. My dad is a pastor, right? True story. So is my uncle, and so is my sister. Right? And so is her husband. I'm surrounded. And they all watch it. Right? And, they, and not only do they all watch it, members of their congregation watch it. <laughs> and it's the most pleasing thing for me when people, not just Christians, but people of any faith, come and tell me that they've enjoyed the show. Because they've enjoyed the show for what it is. And not what they want it to be, this kind of thing, this kind of stigma. They've actually just watched it for what it is. And they've realised, oh, this is fun, entertaining, and there's a kind of message at the middle of it. Um, and I think that that speaks volumes for open-mindedness. Thank you. Hello. Uh, so, my favorite episode is uh, the one with Father Frank and Lucifer's uh, interaction, you know, friendship with Father Frank. So my question has to do with his interactions with priests in general. In the first, in the pilot episode, the priest had a visceral reaction to um, Lucifer, and then Father Frank has like a sort of friendly interaction with him and seems to know that he's Lucifer, the, the devil, but, and Father Kinley seems to know, but the priest that was with him seemed to not really believe it and didn't have any reaction. So I was wondering, do you pre are priests in the know that he is the devil, or is that on an individual basis? So that's a good question. You guys really watch the show. <laughs> you really watch it. <laughs> um, I think. I mean, we, I think when we were setting up the notion of it in the pilot, there was a there was a kind of. Um, I think that some people of faith would have a visceral reaction to it because they felt this kind of darkness of this character. Um, but uh, you know, a lot of the time, people are perplexed by it. I mean, uh, Father Kidley did know that I was Lucifer the Devil. Um, and, and also he had a lot of other things at play, so his reaction was kind of slightly misleading. Um, but Father Frank, you know, I'm glad you brought that up, because that was my favourite episode, still is my favourite episode that we've done at the show. Because I loved the idea of Lucifer befriending the priest. And all of those things that we just talked about, all those preconceived ideas and all these prejudices about... Because I think Lucifer... You know, that's like fresh bait for him, a man of God. <laughs> oh, here we go. Um, but then to have a connection, and what I loved about that episode was their connection was over the language of music. And they really kind of, you know, they, they bonded through an unspoken thing. And they bonded through something that they both love and they both connect to. And they, and they found a common ground. And that, you know, I think that speaks volumes about life. Um, so that, you know, that episode was, was fun to shoot. Coleman Domingo was amazing. But I think the, the big message at the centre of it about acceptance and not judging a book by its cover was the main thing. Thank you so much. You. Hi, I have a question for season five character. <laughs> um, <laughs> I wonder if say that, I was like, there's no one else on screen. <laughs> the prophecy, it has been released from Lucifer, and now he's back in hell. How do you think that would affect how he treats people in hell, and torturing and all that? <laughs> You've certainly touched on something that we've been talking about in the writer's room. Um, I think, um, without trying to sort of like give too much away and talk too much about it, what I would say is that Lucifer's experience on Earth has maybe affected the way that he processes everything. Instead of, so instead of sort of what would Jesus do, what would Chloe do maybe? That kind of thing, yeah. And also what has he learned? 
What's he learned in this time on earth? And what's he learned about humans? What's he learned about himself? And will the demons like it? Exactly. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Did you hear what she said? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think they get a bone? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, in the last season, we saw Eve talk more than once about how being created for Adam made her feel. I'm just wondering how you think Chloe will react when she finds out she's a miracle put in Lucifer's path. <laughs> Especially after Lucifer told him her that there were no more secrets between oh, them. Oh no, what's that show? We were so watching. <laughs> that, that was my big question to the writers as well. I, obviously, I think that's going to be part of our season this year. Um, yeah, I mean, gosh. I don't know. I mean. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, how does one, if you learn that you're kind of like a miracle baby sent from God, how do you deal with that? It's like, I've just found out God exists. Now you're telling me I'm his daughter somehow, kind of. Not his daughter. I won't confuse you. Chloe is not God's daughter. And she's not his sister. <laughs> Drinks heavily. It's getting very complicated. <laughs> um, I, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to that part of our story. Believe me. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Tom. Hello. Um, I always wondered, since you wear glasses a lot of times in public, and I wear glasses, but in the photo op, I walked up to you and I couldn't even see you at all. Um, it makes me wonder if you're wearing contacts or if you can see any of us, and when, you walk, when you're doing scenes, acting, can you actually see the other people's faces? Yeah. <laughs> so, do you want to talk about my prescription? I'm sort of short-sighted, which means I can see, I can, I can read, I don't need glasses for reading. Uh, I kind of need glasses for watching TV, driving, and, um, and seeing big things. It's not so, it's minus 175 in this side, minus 175 in this side. Um, in the slide like in the left side. <laughs> I, I, the only time I wear contact lenses is embarrassing. The only time I wear contact lenses is when I play golf. Aww. True story. Um, the fight scenes? The fight scenes? Gotta take the glasses off for that. No, I mean, honestly, I can, like, I, I drive loose of his car without glasses on. Uh-oh. <laughs> I should have just admitted that. Um, I get by. Like, I've worked for years and years without wearing glasses. But then I forgot the glasses, I put them on and went, oh, the world's a much more clear place. <laughs> okay, twice. Yeah. I mean, training for cataracts. Twice. Yeah. Uh, you are much less blind than I am because I couldn't even see your face when yeah. we did the photo op. Oh. No, I, I, could, I could see yours. Oh, sure. Yeah. Good. You were like this. Thank you. <laughs> That's why he's not wearing them now. <laughs> Hi, Tom. No. Um, I've never had so much love and obsession for a show like this or any other show and I love all of the actors and especially you, you're incredibly talented. But my question is, if you could choose any of your Lucifer castmates to challenge in a lip sync battle, uh -oh. who would you choose and what would you perform? Weirdly, I was talking about this with some mates of mine the other day because we were like, did you see um, Tom Holland's lip sync battle? Uh -oh. yeah. It's amazing. It's, <laughs> it's the reason yeah. I'm never doing that show. <laughs> uh, I think, oh god, there's a few, but like, I think, you know, Amy would be a lot of fun doing a lip sync battle. Um, and, uh, I mean, I think there's quite a few candidates, really. They'd all love a go. The only person who probably wouldn't enjoy doing it is Lauren. Um, even though she'd probably be brilliant at it. Um, but, uh, God, yeah, Amy, Amy would really go for it. I mean, me and Amy, when we get to do singing and dancing, we're like a couple of giddy kids. <laughs> do you have any idea what you would perform if you did? Ooh. 
my hopes. I mean, what I loved about Tom Holland's one was that he did a woman's song. <laughs> so, like, going out there and rocking, you know, I'm like, just a girl. Or something like that. <laughs> that could be quite fun. Go and do another Rihanna. But I just, after watching that, I'm just no way I'm doing that show. <laughs> no way. It'd be awesome to see you anyway, but thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Who's next? Hi. Hi. I was out with some friends and I guess I'd have one too many glasses of wine. Uh -oh. Woo! And they dragged you here. <laughs> <laughs> it's a loose the convention. <laughs> and they were trying to drag me out and when they finally sh tried to sh shove me in the car, I screamed out, Lucifer Morningstar, like, help me. Do you consider yourself some kind of different superhero kind of? Do, what, do I consider Lucifer to be a superhero? Yes. Or you personally? You know. do, I, what, do I consider myself to be a superhero? <laughs> um, yes, I do. Although I've got to work on the flying. <laughs> uh, I just like having fun. The thing about... I don't consider him as a superhero. Because... Because of his kind of like... Because of the celestial side of it all. I consider him... A broken angel, but not a superhero. Does that does that answer your question? I mean, if he was a superhero, what would his superpower be? The fact that he could get drinking, and get truth out of people, mm -hmm. and still then, uh, solve problems, and, mm -hmm. and and help people. See, I think his superpower is his liver. <laughs> I, I, I and it's the one that I take. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to fly? Do you want to lose his liver? Yeah. Well, I'll take that one, please. Yes. Thank you. I'd like to fly. Pardon? What? I rescued you from Florida. I rescued you from Florida or Florida? I thought you said Pornhub. From Florida? Well, was Kevin's paddle really boring? Oh, you <laughs> She said corn hub, right? No, she did not say corn hub. I have a really serious question. Oh, oh you're in the wrong room, though. <laughs> on, on the left. I teleported again. Oh! oh. <laughs> I'm like, she's the glasses thing. Yeah. I'm like, mm-hmm, yeah. yeah. I'm not going to watch it. Um, my really serious question is, uh, your eye makeup is always really on point. Do you know what eyeliner Lucifer wears? Now, I think in season one it was Remington. No. No. No, Rimmel. 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 Yeah. Um, and now? Now I think we've moved up to Chanel. There was, a, there was a point in season two where I was like, it's all right, I'll do it. It's all right, don't worry, I'll do it. <laughs> and I just would turn up on set and I look like Cleopatra. <laughs> and then I'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? It's an excellent look for Lucifer, so well done. Thank you. <laughs> well, they're shutting us down. Uh oh. He's the fucking owner. <laughs> Who's they? I don't have my guitar today, so I can't do a song. Sing out the pillow. Sing out the pillow. No one's recording, it's okay. Have you ever seen a priest try and do a beatboxing? It just sounds like we're just like disagreeing with something. <laughs> So, um, but thank you all for coming. It's been really lovely.